The first few years in the tiny Bosch workshop were, as he said himself, a shambles. Orders were few and far between, and money was tight. But one day, a customer asked him to make an ignition device. He was asked to replicate a device built by another manufacturer, but he saw that it didn't work as it should, or as well as he would like it to. So he decided to modify it. He improved its quality and its reliability. His customer received a better ignition device than he was expecting, and immediately ordered another. For the first time, the small company now had a proprietary product. In the early years, Robert Bosch also worked as a mechanic, developing new products. These included an electrical bell pull, lightning conductors and doorbell systems. But when faced with the challenge of equipping a three-wheeler with a magneto-ignition device, he put his workshop foreman, Arnold Zeringer in charge of the project. The result was so radically different from anything that had been made before that Bosch was able to patent it. The new ignition device propelled the small company to the forefront of engine technology. Getting gasoline engines to work at very high speeds hinged on having a device that could reliably generate ignition sparks in the engine's combustion chamber. Robert Bosch instilled a culture of innovation among his associates in the company. Take Gottlob Honold, for example. When Honold joined the company in 1901, he had a little den where he could develop his ideas. This included basic research as well as product development, turning ideas into things that could then be produced and sold. The company soon became an innovation leader, with a constant stream of new products particularly for the automotive industry. What made Bosch special was that it started from its customers' needs. Starter motors, generators, lighting systems. Innovation became a central factor of the company's success. Yet innovation can be expensive. The company currently spends around 10% of its annual sales revenue on research and development. And if developments make sense, and are regarded as potentially groundbreaking, work is continued on them until they are ready for series production, even if they take longer than planned and cost more than budgeted for. To work in this way is a luxury. It would not be possible in a stock corporation. Yet Bosch is not a publicly listed company, and this has significant benefits for its innovativeness. If you look at the diesel injection pump, it took 15 years before we really got it to the stage we wanted. It was the same with the ABS anti-lock braking system. It was nearly a decade until everything worked and it was ready for series production. Innovation comes naturally to Bosch. Its associates are among the most prolific inventors of any company worldwide. Yet Bosch does not want to rely on its innovative strength alone. People also have to want to buy its innovations.